Hey, I'm Kurt, if you didn't already know that. Today, we're gonna learn more about AppleSoft Basic on my Apple IIe personal computer, which was purchased in 1983. Now, in the first video, we learned some simple AppleSoft Basic features, and those features were printing to the screen, uh, we learned about variables, we learned about math functions, we learned how to edit programs that were in memory, and lastly, in that video, we got an introduction to the two different graphics modes, low res and high res, that the Apple IIe um, contains. And if you haven't watched the first video, um, I would suggest you pause this video and go back and watch the first video, and then come back when you're ready to start this video. We got time, we'll wait. Now in today's video, we're gonna focus on user input into the Apple IIe computer. And the Apple IIe computer uh, did not come with a mouse. Um, joysticks were, were quite popular, however, um, but I'm not going to go into joystick inputs. That's kind of an advanced um, programming topic that hopefully we can cover sometime later. So I'm gonna focus this video on strictly keyboard inputs from the operator. All right, I'm gonna power on the computer. And in order to bypass the DOS disk that it's looking for, I'm going to hit Control Reset and it's gonna boot right into AppleSoft Basic here on the command line. Now the input keyword that can be in an AppleSoft program, it actually pauses that program right there and it lets the user type in something from the keyboard uh, for the program to use later on. So let's demonstrate this with a very simple and short AppleSoft program. And I'm gonna type it right here into the command line So if we list the program, uh, three simple lines, and when we run it, we're going to get the requesting for my name, and this question mark, and the cursor is telling me um, it's waiting for me to input my name. So when I type in my name and hit return, it says, hi, Kurt. The n dollar sign that I used here as the variable name that dollar sign designates that this variable is of string type. So this string type variable, even if I put a number into it, it cannot be used in any math operations. So if your program needed to bring in a number and do some math operations, um, it would look a little bit different. So let me um, type over, uh, let me type a slightly different program. Okay, so there's my new program, um, and when I run it this time, it's asking me um, for a number, so I'm going to give it a number of 2, and it's going to convert 2 into inches. 2 centimeters is 0.787 blah 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 inches. Um, so this variable C without the dollar sign is actually being treated internally by AppleSoft as a number. So had I typed in um, a character or a string, it would have given me a syntax error. Let's try that, just for fun. Um, it just asks me to re-enter, and it will, it will never uh, get past there until I actually meet the requirement of typing in a number. The number that I input here could be an integer, or it could be a floating point. So this numeric variable, it's not designated in AppleSoft as integers or floats. If I run this again, and I type in a float this time, for example, 4.5, it's going to properly treat that as a float and do the math appropriately, and 4.5 centimeters turns out to be you know, a little under two inches. So that's the most basic user input, keyboard input on the Apple IIe. Now, let's move on to a slightly different topic. Let's look at some different looping mechanisms where you can loop back to a certain part in your program. 
and AppleSoft Basic um, gives the user access to probably the most hated um, or at least it's the most controversial statement in um, any programming language and that's the go to statement and the go to statement lets you jump to a line in the code that you want to jump to so let's okay start a new program okay very simple program with a loop it's basically just a simple incrementer printing out um, the results of that math and because um, there's no way to exit this loop this program will run forever or at least until uh, it runs out of memory or blows you know a variable size or something like that um, I can stop the program with a control C and so this is basically X and X squared now I don't know if you noticed this is kind of a fun um, thing uh, with an Apple IIe occasionally in the math uh, of an Apple IIe in its processing of math occasionally it gets a little bit of an error and um, you see that in some of this math which is kind of kind of funny so this program essentially will run forever um, until it's stopped by the user or runs out of memory this is not the most ideal um, it's it's not accepted in the programming community hardly at all there are only a very few cases where the programming community kind of says well okay I guess in that particular case you can use a go-to um, there are so many better ways to loop a program or get a program to jump around so let's start a new program and let's uh, look at the for next loop which is a, um, a much better and much more common way to loop a program All right, simple three-line program, and it's only going to do it 20 times, and then the program will end. So x goes from 1 to 20, and this is the square of x. And one thing about four next loops in, in AppleSoft Basic is um, they only increment integers. There's no way to tell this four next loop to increment x by 0.1 for example and so programmers back in this time had to you know come up with some creative ways uh, to make that happen for example you can put a line before 10 to um, create a new variable let y equal 0 and then you could put a line between 10 and 20 let's call it 15 and you could increment your y by any increment that you wanted to in that line so um, y equals y plus 0 0.1 for example and now the line 20 instead of printing x which is our loop counter we will print y and y squared so y y squared return now if I uh, list my slightly modified program this 4x 1 to 20 and next x is still looping this loop 20 times but we're not actually using the x in this math here anymore we're, we're creating another variable to do the math so that we can increment you know between 0 and 2 at very small increments so the fact that the for loop only incremented in whole integers was not a, not a terrible problem for programmers you know a couple lines of code can can get around that so in that example you saw some more of the math um, errors you know it's basically tiny little rounding errors that build up during the math I want to make a quick comment about rounding on the Apple IIe at least in the AppleSoft programming language there's a keyword called int for integer and what int will do is round a floating point number but it doesn't round it in the way that you and I normally well it's in the way that we learned you know in grade school to round you know 0.5 and above up and to round you know 0.4 and below down it doesn't do that it just basically lops off everything to the right of, de of the decimal place and it basically um, is essentially like rounding everything down even 1.9 rounds all the way down to 1 so um, without creating a new program I will just show you from the command line if I print 1.9 it prints 1.9 if I add the int 
keyword and I print 1.9, it's going to lop off the 0.9 and just give me 1. So the way programmers got around this feature, let's call it a feature, was we added 0.5 to whatever this number was and then when the integer lopped it off it actually acted um, properly um, the way that we would expect it. So I can demonstrate that with a quick little program. So when I run this and I stop it, what you're essentially seeing here is the breakdown between where it rounds down, which is 4.4 and below, it rounds down to 4 and 4.5 and above, it rounds up to 5, which is how we all learned to round in grade school and how you expect a computer to round to. So those are just a few quick examples of AppleSoft Basic in action, and I hope you enjoyed it. Now, before I sign off, I want to show you real quickly my Beagle Brothers catalog because I think it's pretty cool. Um, Beagle Brothers considered themselves a micro software company. And what that means is they didn't make any large utilities like, you know, a full blown word processor or a full blown, you know, spreadsheet program. They made tiny little utilities that may or may not be useful to different types of users. So this particular catalog is winter spring 1987 and um, as I said they're not a big company. Um, there are only about 20 or 25 utilities in this catalog according to the table of contents that can be purchased. Um, let's look at one real quick. The Beagle compiler is the first one in the table of contents. So let's jump to page 20 and learn about the Beagle compiler. So the Beagle compiler is essentially a speed up utility that speeds up your programs. Um, and what it says here is that it's machine language speed for AppleSoft programs. So essentially um, you can write an AppleSoft program in the uh, command line there like I was showing you earlier. And if this Beagle compiler happens to be um, have been booted up and it's running in the background, it will um, speed up your program tremendously by compiling it kind of under the hood for you and um, it'll make it run faster. So what you do is you boot the Beagle compiler using probably a floppy disk, that was the most common way. Once that is booted into memory, you can run any of your AppleSoft programs that you've written before and you have to run them from disk apparently, otherwise this wouldn't gonna, this wouldn't gonna work. Once you run your AppleSoft program from disk, that program is going to be converted on the spot in real time to run at machine language speed, which is apparently super fast according to this ad. How fast is super fast? Well, it depends on your original program, but 10 times speed and up is not uncommon. So, um, all you do is run your program it does have to run from disk, as I mentioned before, so it must have some sort of a, some sort of a hook that um, intercepts any disk um, loads and anytime um, you run something from disk, it intercepts that somehow and compiles it. Now that's going to slow down the initial load, obviously, but once it compiles it um, and then runs the compiled version, it's going to run much faster than um, it would have originally. That's just one example of a utility that Beagle Brothers, the micro software comp company from San Diego, California, offered. Now, the Beagle compiler, if you're curious, sold in 1987 for 75 bucks. And using the magic of post editing, I will tell you exactly how much that is in today's dollars. Look for it somewhere on the screen, probably over there. You gotta have a real need to uh, lay down that kind of dough to make your programs run faster. Um, let's look at one more if we have time. Do we have time? The next page has a program called GPLE that you can buy for 50 bucks in 1987 money. 
GPLE stands for Global Program Line Editor. So it's a it's a program editor. It's a it's an IDE of sorts. Um, compatible with any Apple II. So the GPLE is the classic AppleSoft line editor. It lets you edit your program lines fast without the awkward cursor tracing. It basically installs itself into memory when you boot and it just sits there and it remains invisible while you work. And your programs are unaffected by it. GPLE lets you jump the cursor to the change point in the line, bam, right to the line, right to the character you want and insert or delete text right there. So it sounds a little bit like, um, you know, a standard text editor that we're used to these days, um, where when you type in the cursor, everything to the right of that cursor shifts to the right. Command line editor on the Apple IIe, the default command line editor doesn't do that, and it's, it's, it was a pain. So that's awesome. Um, other code in the line moves aside to make room. Um, if you make a mistake, you can restore a line to its previous condition with one keystroke. So it has a control Z. That's awesome. Control Z. What did we do before we had control Z? Life was hard. So it is compatible with ProDOS, DOS 3.3, DoubleTake, Pronto DOS, DOS Boss, FlexType, etc. That's that's very specific, etc. It's it's compatible with etc. <clears throat> and of course, all of your AppleSoft and integer basic programs get along quite well with GPLE. That last statement where it lists all the different DOS varieties that it works with kind of brings up a, a kind of a an important point about the Apple IIe and computers of this age. They, um, you know, when you when you put together a computer now, you choose your operating system right from the start. I'm gonna do Windows 10, I'm gonna do Ubuntu, I'm gonna do Mac, you can't really do anything on that computer before it has an operating system on it. Um, with this computer and a lot of computers of that age range, um, you basically booted, here's, a, here's an operating system disk right here, you basically decided, oh, today I think I'll boot ProDOS. Today I think I will boot DOS 3.3. And so this computer didn't really do anything until you uh, put in this disk, this DOS disk, and booted up DOS. Once DOS was booted up and gave you the fancy little hello, welcome screen, then you had command line, um, different utilities that you could run. You had uh, command line functions that you could execute. And different versions of DOS had different commands, different APIs, obviously. So anyone like Beagle Brothers who wanted to create an application or a tool or a utility, they kind of had to attach themselves to one of these versions of DOS or, you know, figure out a way to make their software work uh, with all these different versions of DOS. So I just wanted to make that point about um, how the operating system that, that you used on this computer was your choice and it could be a different choice um, on a different day or even a different hour. And that was kind of cool, a little bit confusing um, maybe, but at the time it made sense. It doesn't really make any sense anymore. Um, so I'm kind of babbling, so essentially that means the video is complete. So that's all for this episode, and I would really appreciate it if you would let me know if you liked this episode. And if you really want to see something specific in a future episode, just comment down below in the comment section. So thank you so much for watching, and I appreciate your interest, and I will see you next time. Bye.